The Power of Continuous Profiling, presented by Ala Egitian. Hi, everyone. My name is Ala Egitian, and I'm a solutions engineer at Datadog. And I'm excited to share with you some knowledge on enhancing and optimizing your application and code performance. Before entering the world of observability, I was a software engineer. I was a Java developer. And like a lot of you, I use different approaches to ensure the optimal performance of my code. In order to do this, we need to have good visibility into our applications. So we have observability. We have metrics, traces, and logs, which are also often referred to as three pillars of observability. Each of them serves their unique purpose, but collectively, they provide you with deep insights into the performance of your systems. But we also use static code analysis tools. We write thorough unit and integration tests. We perform careful code reviews. However, the larger your code bases grow, this can become a little trickier, for example, I can kind of relate to this tweet here. I think I was guilty of it myself. So the, with, with growing code bases, it's getting more important to have in-depth visibility into your code. And while these tools that I mentioned, they, they are helpful, but they may not always reflect real-life usage scenar scenarios that can reflect your code performance. So the goal of my quick presentation today is to introduce you the concept of continuous profiling and inspire you to start optimizing your code using profilers. So what is code profiling? It is a way to measure the performance of your code in order to find and optimize the most resource intensive and time consuming parts of your code. And you're probably wondering why I have this stethoscope on the screen. It's because Profiling your code while it's running is kind of similar to having a doctor press a stethoscope to your chest and tell you to breathe in, breathe out, or cough. It helps the doctor to hear and understand what's happening in your respiratory system. And similarly, profiling gives you insights into how your program works, where the hotspots are, where you should focus your optimization efforts. So to give you an idea of what kind of things you could discover with, you, with profilers, let's take a look at different profiler types available. For example, there are CPU profilers. As the name suggests, they will monitor the CPU usage of your application, and you will be able to find functions that s consume most of your CPU resources. There are memory profilers. They will analyze the memory usage and identify memory leaks. Maybe you could locate an area of your code that failed to release memory. There are log profilers. They will help you find functions or see how much time each function spent waiting on a, on a log. And there are different other kind of types as well that I'm not going to go through each and every one of them for the sake of time. But you see that all of this can be very helpful to find the bottlenecks and make a lot of improvements and optimization. And still, despite the benefits, many developers don't profile their code. Why is that? The thing is, historically, profiling has had a bad stigma of causing service interruptions due to performance overhead. Because of this, many developers never profile their code, or if they do, they only do it in their dev environments. But in this case, they don't test their code against real-life traffic. And actually, uh, the landscape of profiling has greatly evolved over time. So a lot of modern profiling tools are specifically designed to reduce this performance overhead. So they are built for you to be able to get insights into live production systems. And this is what I want to talk about. Uh, but first, let's, first uh, let's understand what kind of issues we're looking to solve here. When it comes to performance issues, there are three broad categories, and they are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. Known knowns are the type of challenges that we are well aware of. It might be something that you discovered yourself when reviewing your peers' pull request because you were paying attention. It also uh, can be known unknowns. These are the issues that we are aware they might come up, but it still requires some investigation to understand what's going on there. And finally, 
unknown unknowns. They're the scariest issues when it comes to performance because they are unexpected, unidentified issues that catch you by surprise, but they often require your immediate attention. And it's usually things that you didn't even think that could cause a problem. For example, maybe you had a sudden spike in your user activity and that revealed some unforeseen scalability issues. Now you have no idea why, but you need to start investigating promptly. And especially for handling this kind of issues, it is crucial to be able to profile your code in production. And this is where continuous profiling comes in. By adding this dimension of time, it's getting easier to understand the resources of your systems over time and make your troubleshooting easier. For example, if you don't have that and you had an incident like that, it's, um, it's more challenging because you have to first, before starting troubleshooting, you have to start, rep, uh, you have to first reproduce the issue, right? And if it's one of those tricky bugs that only happens in a specific set of circumstances, it might take you a long time before you finally reproduce it. And you might even not be able to reproduce it in your dev environment. We all had situations where some, something didn't work on one, one environment, but then it did work on our machine, right? So um, besides when it comes to performance issues on production, our intuition can also often play tricks on us because these issues are labeled unknown for a reason. We've never faced them before. So somehow we're more likely to assume that it's caused by something familiar. Maybe it's caused by the same thing that caused our last incident, for example. So it's helpful to remove that guesswork and to look at what actually happened. And I suggest looking at, a, at an example to see how it's going to look like. My example is from Datadog, but the idea behind is the same, so you could start experimenting with the product of your choice. And when it comes to uh, profilers, you will often come across a type of visualization that's called flame graph, and it looks like this. But before going deeper into the flame graph itself, let's get some context. So. I am a developer, I own this Java microservice, and I recently noticed that there was a significant increase in my cloud provider bill. So I want to take a look and see whether there's any room for optimization. First thing I see, it's a CPU profiler. We're looking at the CPU time right now. And when it comes to the visualization itself, it's a visualization of a hierarchical data. In this case, it's a stack traces of profile software. And by just looking at it, it should be easy for you to understand whether any parts of your code needs could use some optimization. And a fun fact, actually, the engineer who came up with this visualization initially, he had it upside down, so the top bar was at the bottom, and the whole thing kind of looked like a flame. That's where the name is coming from. So this one is technically upside down, and you might hear some people refer to it as an icicle graph. But no matter how we call it, you see different bars on this visualization, and each bar represents a function in the stack. So the width of each bar corresponds to the CPU consumption of that function. So the ones with wider bars, they either consume a lot more CPU per execution than the one with the narrow bars, or maybe simply they were called way more often. Another thing I see here is that right now I'm focusing only on my code that I wrote and collapsing the standard libraries I don't have control over. But it's not always only our code to blame. The performance issues also happen in third-party libraries. So it might be helpful to look at all code as well. Engineers tend to trust this known third-party libraries more and assume that the issue was caused by that change they made recently. So this can be helpful. We actually had a situation in Datadog where we had a performance issue with a third-party framework, Akka, and it was totally unexpected. But since we are dogfooding the Datadog products internally, the continuous profiler was um, on in production and our engineers were able to identify it and quickly address it. So this could be one thing also to keep in mind. And finally, now we have, have to add the dimension of time. 
you might have noticed that we're looking at the past one hour right now, but we can go ahead and go back in time and choose that time window that we're interested in. Maybe it's that time window where we had the sudden spike in user activity or that period of time where we noticed the increase in the cloud provider bill. And after choosing all these parameters, we will be looking at exactly what we should look at. And we will notice that there's this bar that's, that takes up most of my screen, and it corresponds to the function that's called compute coefficients on feature. So we see that this method takes up around 75% of our profile. And your tool might even be able to tell you which line specifically, which line of code is the most impactful in, in this function. So now we know exactly where the op optimization opportunities are in our code. So we can go ahead and start addressing that. So the bottom line is having continuous profiler run in production allows you to go directly to the profiler and take a look at the performance of your code at that time when, with the, when the issue occurred. And then you can see whether everything looks as expected or maybe you see any anomalies, maybe you see inefficient usage, resource usage, and then you can take the investigation from there. This way you can mitigate the risk of that degraded service leading to productivity loss or maybe even financial loss. So let's quickly recap and look at all the benefits continuous profiling can provide. First of all, we have reducing MTTR. MTTR stands for mean time to repair, and it is a, it is a metric that measures the time a business critical application was unavailable. So by finding this bottlenecks and quickly addressing them, you are able to reduce the downtime by uh, increasing the um, uh, incident resolution time. So this way, you are able to reduce this metric. We have reducing cloud costs. We know that inefficient resource consumption can lead to skyrocketing cloud costs. And the role of profiler here, here can be significant because you are able to optimize and fine tune your infrastructure and reduce this cloud cost. And finally, improving user experience. When you are able to find this request that takes longest to execute, and then you reduce the latency by optimizing this code, you are improving user experience. There's a lot of research um, on the direct correlation of slow applications and user experience. And we know that by reducing latency of a business critical action by just as little as 10%, can lead to significant increase in conversion rates. So these are all some good reasons to look into continuous profiling and start leveraging it. This is what I prepared for you today. I included a couple of links on things we touched upon that I'll share with you later. And also, if you're interested in the topic, uh, there's going to be another presentation tomorrow where my colleagues will share their learnings and their experience while developing a continuous profiler. So that's going to be interesting. And I hope you found the presentation insightful. And now you're ready to dive deeper and get your hands dirty. And if you have any questions, let's chat afterwards. Let's connect. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much.